Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a patient who does CrossFit. They have shoulder pain, and they have two findings related to their rotator cuff, and the first one is up high here. This is an axial view. This is the front, back, and this is the very top of the rotator cuff, the supraspinatus, and there's a little area of whiteness here. There's a little bit of fluid within a longitudinal tear of the supraspinatus tendon. Not terribly interesting, but the other finding more interesting is in the back. So here's the front, the subscapularis muscle tendon coming along. If we go towards the back, we see the infraspinatus muscle here, the central tendon coming back. The infraspinatus attaches over here. It looks good. As we go down to find the teres minor, we see the teres minor is not normal. So this is the main finding here. You see part of the tendon here, the central tendon, and this brightness around it. This is the muscle here. It's severely atrophic and edematous. So this is a sagittal T2-weighted image. Here's the front. We see the subscapularis. We see the supraspinatus muscle. If we go towards the back, now we see the infraspinatus. Infraspinatus looks really big here. And then down below the infraspinatus, we see this little tiny triangle that's bright. This is a severely atrophic and edematous teres minor muscle. Normally, the teres minor muscle right here is bigger than the infraspinatus, but instead it's very, very small and, again, bright with the fluid. So this, or edema, rather. So this is atrophy of the a teres minor muscle, and we see this isolated atrophy with no other findings. You can think about um, compression or inflammation or injury of the axillary nerve, and it can be injured in the quadrilateral space. They call that quadrilateral space syndrome. They think maybe it's related to fibrous bands or adhesions in there. Some surgeons will go in there and try to find adhesions and lice them, and they claim that the patients do better with that. Sometimes people just let these go, and they get better with time. It usually just shrinks off. Most often, you don't even notice this, so the, the muscles will be so atrophied, just things look normal. And you'll just jog right past it. So in this patient, they've had a recent exercise, and um, I imagine the nerve is more acutely injured because we see edema within the muscle. Most of the time I see this, again, it's just fatty atrophy or just very, very, very tiny, barely notice it at all. But this is, uh, again, edematous, so um, more an acute injury. So we say this may be related to quadrilateral space syndrome injury or irritation of that nerve as it goes through the quadrilateral space. Sometimes you can have ganglion cysts of the uh, labrum that poke off backwards here and can push, go into the quadrilateral space and push on the axillary nerve. And uh, other times you can have injuries where they dislocate the shoulder backwards and may injure it. Other times we don't even know why it's there. Maybe exercise, it causes adhesions or fibrous bands or irritation. Who knows? But I try to keep it simple and just say there's edema and atrophy. Uh, compatible with quadrilateral space syndrome, and there's no mass tumor or ganglion cyst or anything associated with it, and just leave it at that. So thank you very much.